Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we're going to dive into the conversation around Brandon Ingram. And Ingram, a former All-Star, has been a, you know, he was probably the biggest chip, I would say, in the Anthony Davis to LA trade of getting Brandon Ingram back. And again, he became an All-Star in his first season with the Pelicans as he won Most Improved Player, but Yet to reach all-star status since then, and last year was probably as... It's tough to say because of the injury, obviously, and the way that it ended. It was definitely not his best moment in with New Orleans, and obviously, you know, the playoffs went really poorly from him, which I choose to not bury him for it, considering the fact that he was coming back from his injury. He had... I want to say came back for the final regular season game of the year, but he was clearly not 100%. And going up against that Oklahoma City defense where they are young, yes, but they were extremely physical and Lou Dort had him locked up and Lou Dort is one of the best defenders in the NBA. So I think it's, again, unfair to leave out the context of the injury that he was overcoming and the fact that he hadn't played basketball really for about a month or so leading into that. So ultimately, you know, Brandon Ingram, it feels like his stock is maybe a little bit on the lower end right now, but he's still a very talented player. And ultimately, you know, I can understand why the Pelicans are are not wanting to sign him to this max deal because they already have so many pieces right now. And especially because of the fact that, you know, you have... You're going to have to pay probably at least Zion Williamson and you know some of these other guys, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy could de- develop into something. And you know you also, for whatever it's worth, we saw in the play-in tournament when they were facing the Lakers that Pelicans went on that run with Brandon Ingram on the bench. And again, not an indictment on Brandon Ingram, but more of praising the play of some of these other wings that are on the roster when I think it was Trey Murphy who was in the game for them and he was really effective for them. Um, I'm trying to look through my notes here to see if I have the exact lineup that was on the court when they go on this run. It was Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, Zion Williamson, and Larry Nance when they went on that massive run to almost pull off the comeback before Zion gets hurt. But again, I think that there are you know younger players on the roster as well where the Pelicans feel like they can get some level of production from them that can be mostly equivalent to what Brandon Ingram provides them and pay them a lot less money. Not to mention the fact that, you know, we have this, of course, second luxury tax apron that they desperately don't want to dive into because this is a team that, you know, we've been saying for years is very talented, but also, you know, was young for a number of those years, and now it feels like they are trying to ramp up to something more than that there hasn't really been a ton of evidence up to this point. And yes, we should pour all of our savings into this team right now. So they could maybe be there at some point soon, but I'm not quite sure yet. So it is interesting to consider when you look at what the Pelicans have right now, you know, you have all of these backup wings that can slide into a, role for a bigger role that is for the Pelicans and now especially with DeJounte Murray on the roster they have a little bit more of a traditional point guard CJ who has done a fine job I would say of holding down that role even though that's really not what he is as an NBA player he can go back to the two and then From there, you know, you have Zion, where you'd love to see some point guard minutes from him as well. If you weren't really tuned into the Pelicans last season, there were legitimately stretches during the regular season where he was getting actual point guard minutes and he looked great with the ball in his hands. So that's something that I'd want to see them, you know, sort of kick the kick the rocks on or I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Experiment with that a little bit more, but you know. 
What they really need right now is a center. They have all of the backup wing options that somebody could fill in for Brandon Ingram. It would probably be Herb Jones in the starting lineup. But as things stand right now, Eves Misi, their first round draft selection, is the only center on the roster as Jonas Valanciunas walked in free agency. So that is something that absolutely needs to be addressed as we talked about, especially in the Western Conference when there are a number of teams that can hurt you with size that the Pelicans are going to need to beef up because I like me see a lot as a prospect, but he still has a lot of developing to do. And you look around the league at what types of trades could be out there for him. Now the Sacramento Kings have been the team that has been most recently connected to him. Again, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but love that the Kings are trying to be aggressive here, but I'm not sure if the Kings can really return anything that is going to be what the Pelicans need. Again, I feel like this can be a have the making of a win-win trade of Brandon Ingram for somebody like, again, just talked about him with the Warriors, Jarrett Allen. I would love that trade from both parties where the Cavaliers get that three-man that they have been looking for for years, and in return, the Pelicans can get their defensive anchor who and and a player in Jarrett Allen who finally can be... I wouldn't say he's been held back in Cleveland, but... I think that the redundancy of him and Evan Mobley has caused for a little bit of underappreciation of what he can be as a rim protector, and you love everything you can get from Mobley, obviously, but Jarrett Allen being the guy sort of having a team around him that can provide him with opportunities under the rim in the pick and roll game and such. So that would be something I would be, and that team defensively, I mean, outside of CJ McCollum, that team could be really elite defensively. So that's a fit that I would really love to see there. But, you know, I keep throwing Jared Allen in all of these trade situations, and we know that the Cavaliers probably aren't going to pull the trigger on that, but I would love to see a, you know, roster reconfiguration there in Cleveland. And Jarrett Allen is a player that I think a lot of teams could benefit from having. But some of the other teams that have been rumored here are the Golden State Warriors in trying to pull off some type of a deal there. I think the Warriors would be an interesting fit. Um, you have a player that is a little bit more on ball and can maybe that's what the Warriors could use right now. Now, obviously, it's the Steph, it's the te, uh, excuse me, it is the Steph Curry show, and that's what their focus should be. And now I like adding players like DeAnthony Melton and Buddy Heald that can sort of play off ball and get theirs that way. That maybe that's just the direction the Warriors are gonna want to go. Having another player who can, in isolation, get you a bucket could be something they could really benefit from because for the Warriors, I'm not sure if they really have that right now outside of Steph Curry, and I'm high on a Brandon Pajemski, but you know, outside of that, there really aren't any isolation creators for them, so... It's a fit that makes a lot of sense. I've talked about, I think that Laurie Markkinen would be maybe the best option in terms of what he can do in the catch and shoot for the Warriors. So I'd love to see that happen. But Brandon Ingram could be an interesting one as well, where he gives you a little bit of positional flexibility. He has the offensive creation. He's a lengthy defender and... I would be interested to see how that plays out. Again, not my perfect fit, but a team that I do I do think makes sense. And then, you know, outside of that, I'm really not sure what these what the options are. Now, the Miami Heat are another team that have been at least in the conversation with a couple of these stars that have moved around. Financially, it would take a good amount for them to overcome. I do feel like Brandon Ingram in Miami could be, you know, potentially really fun with him and Jimmy Butler. You have Terry Rozier as well. It's just a bunch of guys who can get you a shot. And, you know, again, 
I'm not sure if in this in this case either the Heat necessarily have the assets to pull this type of a deal off, but that would be a sneaky one that I think could put the Heat back in. I don't know if we're going to see full finals level contention again, but they they are better than an 8 seed. And last year they were bad, but so I'm not saying they should have been higher last season, but I think that the overall organization can absolutely do better than they did last year and that would be an interesting fit to me but let me know where you want to see Brandon Ingram end up in the comment section obviously in these types of deals as well sometimes it is a surprise team that just sort of slides in and makes the big move so we're not sure yet because there hasn't been much movement on this yet it could be a slow moving process from here on out but we're going to be taking our next break here and when we come back on the other side, want to dive into a little bit of the NBA Summer League as that's going to be kicking off on Saturday. So we'll run through the overall layout of the Summer League, the schedule, and some of the key storylines to watch as tomorrow we are going to see Bronny James play his first game in the NBA. So stick with us and we will be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 